Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Starting Small Music Podcast. I'm your host, Justin McCormick. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, let me just say first, I'm so excited to be starting this podcast with y'all. Uh, we have a lot of great guests coming up, and I couldn't be more excited than our first guest that we have this week for you. We have hit songwriter and producer, Mark Coleman. You've heard his songs just as simple by Florida Georgia Line and Single Saturday Night by Cole Swindell and so many more. We're going to get into where he grew up and how he got to Nashville. I had such a great time talking to Mark, and I know you guys are going to enjoy this episode, too. I'll see you all at the end of the episode. All right. Welcome to Starting Small Music. Today, I have hit winning songwriter, producer, and artist Mark Coleman. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be here, man. So growing up, who were some of your favorite artists? Uh, who was like some of the first people that got you into music that uh, kind of this like made you think, like, man, like people do this for a living. Like this is something maybe I want to do. Yeah, totally. I think, um, well, I grew up, I had three older, older brothers growing up. So I always got kind of hand-me-down records uh, uh, from the 80s, early 90s. So I, I, I got into uh, rock and like grunge, kind of early 90s stuff. That's what my, basically what my brothers were listening to. That's kind of what I was listening to. So I got into music really that way. Uh, the stuff, you know, that's kind of influenced me early on was, was more of that grunge, post-grunge. A rock kind of stuff yeah awesome and i mean so if you had two older brothers playing music uh did you have to play bass first was that your first instrument did you get stuck with the bass <laughs> you know funny thing is my uh so i i actually got my first guitar one christmas like 12 or 13 and i kind of started playing and learning on my own and then i kind of ditched it and my brother my the brother above right above me started learning and he started getting better than me so i kind of picked it up after he he taught me a few things and and uh so i kind of started with it and then he got into it again and we so we kind of went back and forth a little bit but uh um but yeah so he kind of uh, uh took the range for me for a little bit and then i kind of picked it up again and started l- learning it myself a little more you know yeah did you so you were from illinois did you play a lot like did your brothers have a band did you guys play locally or anything like that yeah so i uh, grew up in yeah small town in illinois um uh, the brother right above me was five years older than me. He he was playing in bands uh, while I was still in high school. Um, he played kind of locally around, uh, you know, Southern Illinois, where I'm from, uh, different bars, different towns, kind of in the region. And uh, uh, his band actually went on to um, be signed to Epic Records. Oh, no, uh, okay. It was a band called Revis. It was a post-grunge kind of rock, uh, rock band. They went on tour with, like, Evanescence. Uh, this was early 2000s, 2001, two, something like that. So as he was taking off doing that, I was just still in high school. And so I kind of started my own bands and, in high school. And uh, so he kind of inspired me to do the band thing. It was more rock affiliated kind of stuff, you know, stuff I'd grown up listening to. And um, so through him, I, I got super interested into it. You know, I, I grew up playing in sports and doing all that. And I kind of my junior senior year really kind of shifted from that into music you know yeah playing in bands and stuff so so uh was it easier for you to like when you decided that you wanted to make music your career like was it easier like on like convincing your parents almost that you wanted to do that since your brother was already off in the races like doing his thing like was it easy for you to say like this is what i want to do too like did they always support like your goals of like being in the industry yeah i think that's a good question because i they've always been super supportive and since he uh kind of paved that way as far as you know music it being a a, a actual job you know that potentially um it kind of made it easier for me to be like hey if i want to go this route uh that they would uh, be all for it and they've always been super supportive of uh, everything that i've tried to uh you know accomplish and and, then especially early on you know i went to college for a couple years out of high school um and was kind of back and forth. I, I moved to Ohio for a year, played in a band over there, and then was still playing in bands, kind of go in college, and um, eventually quit my last band and kind of started focusing on on songwriting mm-hmm. and that side of the production. You know, I got uh, my own computer and, and uh, like a Pro Tools set up and was kind of doing my own, own uh, demos. And that was probably like 2005-ish, I guess. 2006 is when I really got into like, oh, I can, I can write, you know, wanting to get into the writing side of things after I quit my last band Mm -hmm. and to kind of explore that, um, 
that world, you know, uh, that I really didn't know much about, but I, I knew I was kind of wanting to get away from the band thing and see what it was like to be a songwriter. So, so coming from Illinois, how do you feel like, I, I think like coming from Indiana, there's kind of like a thing in the Midwest where people don't see like doing fun careers, like music, you know, like, do you, did you experience kind of that shadow, like growing up where people kind of just like are expected to do like a normal nine to five? Like, did you like, kind of like feel like you know, need to break out of that box and come to Nashville? Yeah, it, it seems like such a foreign thing, especially coming from a small town and, um, you know, not thinking about exactly, you know, what your, what career you're going to be, you know, shoot towards or, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, going to high school, going to college, it seems like the, the track, you know, it, that, that makes most sense. But, um, I just always, I think, ha and have my older brother kind of paved that way and show me, showing that there's an opportunity for, uh, you know, to move to LA or be, be, be picked up, uh, you know, to be signed to a record label for music to be a, a, a job, you know? And so I think having his band have some success kind of showed that, the, the, you know, that it was possible to kind of achieve, uh, like a songwriting thing or, or to be in the music business really yeah, for, coming yeah. from a small town, you know, it's like, uh, and, and even then back then, you know, it was even harder because there wasn't social media really or anything. Well, not, not as big as it is now, obviously. So you had to kind of take some different avenues to try and break into, uh, into Nashville or LA or, you know, to try and get those kind of things going. So. Totally. So and in your bio online, it says that you moved to Nashville in 2014, but I see in 2013, you had a track in a Disney movie in Plains. How did that uh, come about before you even moved to Nashville? Did you already have a pub deal before you even moved to town? Or like, how did you get connected with Disney? Yeah, so what happened? So I signed my first pub deal in, uh, I think it was late 2010, uh, to a company called Our House Entertainment. Um, it's ran by uh, an amazing songwriter, Cara Diaguardi, and uh, another guy, Stephen Femper. So they signed me in 2010. And so through um, through them is how I got connected with the Disney thing. And so Stephen, um, uh, they had, you know, they were looking for a song for the particular spot in the movie. And so through Stephen and, the, and my publisher at the time, kind of connected those dots. And I just kind of started working on this thing that they um, have for the, the movie Planes, which is what it, it ended up being on. Um, and just started kind of chipping away at uh, at this song that they were needing uh, to fill this uh, uh, spot in the movie. So kind of like a call sheet, like it's just like yeah. a movie, like they said, like we need a song for like this part. And like you kind of had an outline and basis to ride around. That's super exactly. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they send you a little outline of what they're looking for and, and you just kind of, yeah, you tailor, tailor make the song to, yeah, that for that, um, so, yeah, that spot, yeah. So did you use uh, that momentum coming from 2013 as leverage, like when you first moved to town, like, uh, and like, who were some of the first like big people that like took a shot on you? Like when you first moved to town? Yeah. So when I, I, w what ended up happening as far as living in Illinois, I was living in Illinois trying to, you know, do the songwriting thing, which is, which was difficult. Uh, middle of nowhere, not being a uh, real, you know, big music hub in the <laughs> middle of nowhere, Illinois. So I was having to travel a lot, you know, I was going to LA coming down to Nashville, knew some people, not very many. And I was mostly in, in the rock world. You know, I was working with like uh, Hailstorm, Three Days Grace, um, writing with those kind of bands, you know, um, some more, like more active rock kind of stuff. And uh, uh, ended up feeling like I needed to uh, move to Nashville to kind of really explore if this is going to be a career I'm going to be able to, you know, stick with and, and make a, make a whole career out of, you know? So, um, I convinced my wife and, uh, I had one son at the time to, for us all to, to move down and make the big move to Nashville. Um, and, and I ended up, uh, I had some, some, uh, like I said, a few people I knew our house had done a deal with BMG. So I was with our house entertainment and BMG as well. And BMG has an office in, in Nashville. And um, I'd met a couple, I knew a couple of people there. Uh, Chris Oglesby uh, was a fellow that, that I had known before I'd moved. And so, and he was working at BMG mm -hmm. at the time. So I connected with him and uh, we just kind of started working together, getting in different rooms and, um, 
and trying to uh, slowly over like a year or two slowly pivoted into country, mm -hmm. which is where everything kind of shifted for me um, away from the rock stuff and just being here, um, you know, breaking into the, the country world. Totally. That's awesome. So yeah. they, they normally call Nashville a 10 year town for a lot of people, but within four years of you moving there, you got your first number one with Florida Georgia line simple. Uh, so that was, that went number one in 2018, but how, uh, far before that did you write it was that written i'm sure years before yeah it wasn't too far it was i think 2017 okay uh which sometimes you know they they, they are quicker like that sometimes it uh, you know it takes two or three years before something is actually you know picked up and and then and cut and then released and uh you know you hope for a single but you never know um well, how, how things will pan out but uh uh, but yeah, that was written in, in 2017 on the road. Uh, I'd met um, uh, a, a friend, uh, Dane Schmidt, a buddy of mine. I met him in 2015, 2016. Um, and that's how I got connected with uh, um, uh, FGL's publishing uh, Tree Vibes. Yeah. So I met, I met Dane. He was working at Tree Vibes at the time. And he kind of connected me. With, with the FGL guys and that's so that's how I ended up I was going on the road riding with them quite a bit early on uh, my early kind of stage of pivoting into into the country world and so yeah they were nice enough to take me on and uh, and we were ride together and that was written on one of the trips uh, in 2017 um, that we wrote uh, simple which was that first one yeah so I saw something online that it said that you came in with a beat that was used in Simple, and then just a couple minutes in, Tyler came up with the title Simple. Uh, and do you remember the song? Like, what do you remember about that day specifically? And like, do you remember leaving like that day thinking this song was gonna do a big thing, like be that song that's gonna change the game for you? Yeah, I remember it being a cool song, great song. You know, we write so many; it's hard sometimes. It's kind of uh, it's hard to tell <laughs> what's gonna be. You know, end up. <laughs> Uh, every, what everyone's going to end up loving or not. But I, I, I remember us thinking that we liked the song. It was cool. And, and, uh, uh, but I, I, for that one, I had, I usually come in with, um, I, I do the track in the room usually. So I'm writing in and producing and, and kind of all in one in, in the session. But um, uh, that one I had, I usually have ideas kind of laid out in a session. Mm -hmm. So you can, we can just kind of go through um, tracks, vibes, and just sounds, and see what what hits us that day. So that's one I had, yeah, kind of previously made up, probably the morning of, um, and yeah, we just kind of you know went through some ideas and landed on that one. Um, and I remember it, it, it going pretty quick, uh, you know, maybe an hour or two uh, see, to write that see. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of people sometimes say they're like they're a track guy they're like a melody guy like and you had the track with this one and it seems like that's kind of like what you like to do but is it sometimes like you just play the room or like do you have one thing you focus on or is it kind of just who you're writing with that day yeah I, I think it's it's situational in that yeah sense it's kind of yeah leans to whatever tailored to whatever the session is and it, it, sometimes it's more of an organic artist and you, you know you can just pick up a guitar and and just kind of feel the feel out the room, feel out the the, the vibe, I guess, of uh, the day. You know uh, what the artist wants to do, and uh, but I always have tracks ready to go if we need to. You know, if someone wants to uh, listen to something, kind of get inspired by a sound or uh, you know uh, uh, some some kind of certain thing. But, uh, but yeah, I I, I I like to leave it open and and you know kind of just uh, leave it open to whatever uh, yeah the artist is feeling. You know. Yeah. So you at on one of the arguably like best selling uh, country albums in a long time, Morgan Wallen's Dangerous album. You had three cuts on it: Neon Eyes, What You Think About Country, and Me on Whiskey. Uh, how was that to be on such like a? I think that's such a monumental record, like in the past twenty years in country. Like, how did that like influence like this next step of your career? And I mean, uh, you know, taking it to the next step. Yeah, I mean, it, it, amazing uh, to be a part of such a an awesome record and incredible i mean it's amazing to see how well it's done and uh much deserve it on on morgan and the team's part i mean they they they're, they're all awesome and and i uh yeah it's just so cool to be a part of uh, such a big thing you know so cool to see how, how yeah and you responsive it was and you've continued that connection too, because uh, uh, I've heard the story of Ernest and Benny Burgess uh, hearing the old George Jones song, writing to come write flower shops with you. 
uh, how do you remember, yeah. uh, do you remember them walking in and presenting this idea to you? And like, did you already, like, it seemed like the day that Ernest wrote that he was already hyped that this song was going to be huge. Like, did you already feel that too in the room? Yeah, I remember coming uh, coming in super excited about the the idea, the concept, and everything. And that was one of those where we just did it organically, you know, in the, no track or anything. Um, we just kind of played it in the room and just and just wrote it, you know, off the cuff kind of, um, kind of thing, you know. Yeah, it's a beautifully written song. Same with uh, yeah, thanks. Man. Uh, uh, Jesus doesn't do it that way. That one. Uh, hopefully, that'll be on oh. the next Wallen record. Uh, oh yeah. Guys. Yeah, it seems like uh, you have a you really fit uh, Morgan sound with that with your rock uh, influence. You know, that's really what all the big loud guys, Hardy, Ernest, all those guys are really heavy '90s, 2000s rock based. I feel yeah. like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they all had that influence, especially Hardy. You know, Hardy and I, um, you know, met when we first like started going out on uh, the FGL tours and stuff like that. Obviously, Simple, like I spoke uh, to before, that was probably one of the first you know, 10, 15 songs we'd written together um, as we first started writing. But, uh, you know, we, we, we have that connection of, you know, we love um, 90s rock, uh, post grunge, early 2000s, uh, stuff like that. So uh, you guys yeah, want to do definitely... the first country warp tour is coming soon, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So one last question for you. Uh, what's your advice to any young songwriters or artists out there that are at home uh, working on songs, maybe writing in their room, thinking about making that move to Nashville? What do you have to say to them? I think, hey, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, keep uh, keep writing, recording, learning everything you can to uh, put, put your, just put your stuff out there, put your music out there, connect. You know, one thing I wish I had when I was – you know, coming from a small town is uh, just the connection that we have uh, today with social media and everything. You can, it's, it's so easy to connect with people if you want, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, dropping a message to whoever and, and just, you know, putting your stuff out there for people to hear. It's so, so much more accessible, uh, I feel like. So I think just, yeah, keep keep putting stuff out there, keep working hard. Uh, I think persistence is the biggest key to all this. You know, I've, there's, for my career, it's ups and downs. There's, you know, it, it's all over the place. So uh, this isn't, not for the faint of heart, you know, you gotta stay uh, uh, driven and you know, it's the grindstone and, and just stay persistent. Don't take no for an answer and just keep grinding out. And it's, and if you can move to, if you're living out there in a small town, I wish I had moved probably uh, somewhere maybe a little earlier, but everybody's got their own story. Everybody's got their own um, uh, own thing. So if you, if you can move to a music hub where you, if you really want to do it and to try and pursue it, then uh, I think that'll give you an advantage. Uh, but there's a lot of ways to to do it. So it just do you. I think that's some great work hard, man. Just work hard. That's all it is. <laughs> well, you guys heard it here first from Mark. Mark, thank you so much for taking your time uh, today. Uh, congratulations on all the success the past couple of years. Is there anything else you want to tell everyone else? Anything you want to promote out there? Yeah, we got uh, um, Ernest and Morgan. I got that Flower Shops uh, record that just came out. Uh, well, super excited about that. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm just, uh, just notes to the grindstone here at, uh, in Nashville, just working on the next uh, next hit and that chasing the the next thing. So, um, but I appreciate you having me on, man. It's, this is awesome. I had had a blast. Thank you. All right, guys. There you guys heard it. My conversation with Mark Holman. Mark, thank you so much again for joining the podcast. I had a great time talking with you. Y'all go follow him at Holman Mark on Instagram. Go stream Flower Shops right now. Let's get that thing to number one. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. We have an awesome podcast coming up with John Panzer, guitarist for Colton Dixon and Fight the Fury. You guys are really going to enjoy that episode. We'll see you next week. And remember, everyone starts small.